Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for the Strider plugin in Unreal Engine 4. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Stride Warp node, see what it does, how to set it up, and go through all the settings so we know what everything does. If you haven't already, go back and watch the introduction and overview video to see what all the nodes do and get a general understanding of the plugin. So let's have a look at what the Stride Warp node does. By default, it just has this one pin called Stride Scale, and it does what it says on the tin. It scales the stride of the character. And by doing this, we can get different speeds. So if we change the default of one to say two, our character is gonna move twice as fast, but not by increasing the play rate, but actually increasing the stride. If I bring it below one to something like 0.5, you can see we take smaller steps. Setting it to zero, you can see we run on the spot. So this is a way that we can change the speed of our animation without changing the play rate because changing play rate has many adverse effects. It breaks the animation look and it also causes turns to happen slower. Let's have a quick look at what happens if we use play rate instead. So if I set the speed of play rate to zero, our character actually freezes. At a play rate of 0.3, our character goes in slow motion like they're frozen. And if I set it to two, the character bounces around in not so great a way. Generally, changing the play rate of an animation more than 10% is gonna damage the source animation. So that's why we can use stride scaling. To scale it up even three times doesn't quite look too bad. Three times is quite extreme, but you know, two times the speed. And if we combine in a little bit of play rate, uh, maybe like 10%, we can get a lot of different speeds without ruining our animation and without getting any foot sliding. So that is what the Stride Warp node does. There's a lot of settings that we can use to tweak it and how the hips are shifted down, etc. And we're gonna look at how we do that in the setup phase. So let's do that right now. And we'll go to our a somewhat blank graph and let's create a node from scratch. So to create a node, we just right click and we can type in warp to get the animation warping heading and choose a Stride Warp node. We'll plug in the poses on each side and because these are component space, we'll automatically create a component uh, to local and local to component conversion nodes. Drag a pin from the stride scale and promote it to a variable. I'm gonna call this stride scale, funnily enough. And I'm gonna give it a range between zero and five. Even five is too extreme. You probably wanna you know, cap your stride scaling at about two or even 2.5, uh, but we're gonna do this just for the sake of testing. So let's compile that and nothing's gonna happen right away because we need to set up some bone references for this to work. And there's three sections. The first is the stride pivot. Stride warping works around a pivot point. It scales the stride up and down around that point. So it's very important. We can either choose the root bone or we can choose the pelvis and project it to the ground. This is gonna give us a stride pivot that stays under the pelvis but is on the ground and I think this is actually the best option rather than the root because all movement generally revolves around the hips our legs are connected to the hips and uh, the hips may move off the root um, as the animation goes and any good animation will if it's simulating proper human motion so I'm gonna ignore the rest of the settings for now. We'll have a look at those later. Let's go on to hips, the hip adjustment. We need to select the hips. When we increase the stride, we sometimes need to pull the hips down to avoid hyperextension. And this is where we have the settings for that. I'm gonna leave that as default and keep it as hips. Next, we need to define the limbs. We have two limbs on a normal human, one for the left leg, one for the right. For each of these, we need to specify the tip and the IK target. So the tip is the actual foot. So I'm gonna type in foot and just choose the foot L bone. And I'm gonna type in foot again and choose the IK foot L for the IK target. A normal human leg has two bones in an IK chain. If you have like a werewolf with you know a third uh, bone in the leg, you'd, you'd make this three and you'd set up your IK. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So we can then add in another uh, foot and the foot R, so IK foot R, and that is our limbs set up. So this should theoretically work now, but you're gonna notice as you change stuff, nothing happens except for the hips being shifted down. And that is because we haven't set up the IK. We can confirm that it is working though if we turn on all the bones 
and we'll see these IK nodes and we'll make sure that they're shifting out when we increase the scale and decrease the scale. Let's quickly set up the uh, one of Unreal Engine's IK nodes just so we can get this going and then we'll start tweaking the rest of the settings. I'll set this back to one for now. Okay, so we need to add in a leg IK. You can set this up any way you want really. Um, it doesn't have to be a leg IK, you can have two two bone IK nodes. Uh, however your normal setup, it's gonna work fine as long as it's uh, setting the IK with these IK nodes. So let's set this up quickly. I'm not gonna go into all the settings for this IK node. You can look that up on Unreal Engine documentation. Let's just set up the IK foot bone. So that's foot L, IK foot, FK foot bone is foot L. And the right foot, we're gonna go foot R, IK foot R for the IK. And for the FK, it's just foot R. Okay, now that we've set up that IK, we should see that the IK actually works and our stride is actually scaled. I'm just gonna turn off this bone visualization for now. So there we go, that is the basic setup for a stride warp node. Let's have a look now at how we can uh, change the settings and add a bit more diversity to it. Obviously, some things don't look so great. For example, the hip movement is quite abrupt. We can modify these settings quite easily. And there's also a few other things that we can do. Let's have a look at the other inputs that we can add. So I'm gonna just expose these inputs so we can play with them. And I'm gonna add in a direction. Um, so, sorry, that needs to be a promote to a variable. Done it again. And we'll promote this one to a variable as well, just so we can have a look at what they do. You don't need to always use these, um, but they can be useful in certain situations. I'm gonna call this one twist. And I'm gonna call this one direction. Now, obviously, because this is a forward running animation, the direction is quite simple. It's the default forward. But if we have an animation that's running right, or if we're using an orientation warping node, you can see the next tutorial for that. Um, we want to warp the stride along the same direction as those, uh, as that orientation. So let me show you an example of that. I'll get a different animation here, um, one that goes left, and we'll plug that in. And what we want to do is we want to set the direction so that it is actually scaling along the correct direction. If we change the stride here, you can see that it's still scaling the stride in the direction the character is facing, not the way that the character is moving or the legs are moving. So we need to set that direction to negative 90. And now we can see that is working properly. Obviously, I need to change the scale down. That's a bit extreme. So now it's actually stride warping in the same direction. Now generally, you would have this direction variable being used for orientation warping nodes and every node that has some kind of direction. Let's move on and have a quick look at what twist does. The twist is just an option that is there um, to allow you to kind of convert this animation into somewhat of a strafe. It's kind of like orientation warping, but not quite as flexible. Um, if I change the value of the twist here, you can see that we've turned this animation to kind of strafe uh, to the right 45 degrees, but the legs and feet are still facing forward. We're not rot rotating the whole body like orientation warping. Uh, but this has a limitation of probably about, you know, 60, maybe tops degrees. If we go to 90, the legs start crossing. This is something you can use or not use. It's really up to you. Uh, most of the time, you won't be using the twist. So I'm going to just disconnect that for now. And I'll set that all to default. Okay, so that's good. Let's have a look at the other settings. The other setting I really want to have a look at is hip adjustment. So if we look at the hip adjustment, um, I'll set the stride scale to three so we can get some extreme view of this. Our hips are being pulled down so that we can get that stride. However, this isn't always realistic in the case of running. If we are walking, we want the hips to be pulled all the way down so the feet, there's always one foot touching the floor. But, but that's not necessarily ne uh, the case for um, running. So in the case of running, you might have zero hip adjustment uh, because you don't, you, the hips don't drop as much while you're running, they might drop a little bit. And this is where this adjustment ratio comes into play. If we set it to one, the hips are gonna be adjusted 100%. 
So there's always a foot touching the ground, basically. If we set it to zero, there's not gonna be any hip adjustment. If we set it to 0 0.5, we're gonna have, you guessed it, 50% hip adjustment. So you can tweak that to suit the animation that you're currently on. A sprint will probably have zero, a walk will probably have full, and a jog might have somewhere between 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. You can play around with that number until you get something you like. So let's say we have a walk animation. Let me grab a walk animation, walk forward rifle. We'll plug that in there. Uh, we, we don't, we, we do need some hip adjustment here because if I scale the stride, um, I've got another jog forward by mistake. Let me go back to walk forward. There we go. If we scale the stride and we're not hip adjusting, you can see our feet go in the air. So in the case of a walk, we really need to have a full hip adjustment but then what, we, what, what tends to happen is we get this abrupt bopping. And this is where max recovery rate comes into. This is a rate of recovery. So we instantly push the hips down so that we don't get leg extension or floaty legs, but we don't have to push it up straight away. If we set this to negative one, it will be instant, but we can set in a rate, which is basically centimeters per second. I've set this to 100. Let's see if that smooths it out a little bit. Mm, that's still a bit fast. Let's set it down to 50. That's probably a bit too slow. You can see it does kind of dampen that recovery of the hips. You need to play with this option to get it how you want. Obviously, a two times scale is pretty extreme for a walk anyway. So there's that. Okay, so that is hip adjustment. Let's have a look at the stride pivot settings. We have offset and this is uh, pretty simple. So I'm gonna actually turn on the debugging so we can visualize this. So to turn on the debugging, we just set uh, a.animnode.warp. So this is after pressing the tilde key, we're in the console commands, and we can go to stride.debug. And if we set this to zero, it's off. One and two are different options for debugging. I'm just gonna put two so that it's full debugging. So this little gizmo in the middle is the stride pivot, and you can see it's moving under the hips, but it's projected to the ground as we set up. We can offset it along this green direction uh, so that it's in a different position. I'm just gonna set it to 50 just so you can see easily. Now it's been pushed 50 forwards. If I stride the scale if it, in that direction, you can see the legs are, uh, are scaled backwards a lot more. Um, and obviously that's an extreme case to show an example. I'm gonna offset it to negative 50. So now it's back there and you can see the feet are all out the front. So you're generally gonna keep this as zero, but you might change it a little bit if your legs are a bit too far out the front or out the back. Um, but most of the time, keep that as zero. We have our stride vector method. Now, most of the time you're gonna want this as manual, and this is basically inputting this direction. You can set it to um, active velocity, but your, uh, your mileage is gonna vary on this because there's different things that can affect the active velocity and not just your input. So um, use that with caution. I would recommend using the manual option and setting this direction value in the event graph. Smoothing, we can smooth the rotation of the stride pivot. So for example, uh, if we change the direction, you can see the stride pivot actually rotates. So if it's set to negative one, it's gonna rotate instantly. Um, so 90 degrees, bang, instant. If we do something like set it to 100, uh, so this is degrees per second, let's make it 360 degrees per second, that probably makes a bit more sense. And I'll change the direction to 90. You can see it smoothly rotates around and it's not instant, um, and that's that. The next option is choose nearest axis. With stride scaling, it doesn't really matter which, unless we're using an offset, it doesn't really matter which, um, you know, the rotation of the, the stride pivot, it's more the, the axis that it's on. So for example, I've set this to 180, but note how the green is still pointing forward. And that's because it's chosen the nearest axis rather than rotating all the way around. Now, if you uncheck this, you'll see if we change the direction to 180, it is gonna rotate all the way around um, instead of choosing the nearest axis. Choose this as you like. Um, I generally leave choose nearest axis on. Uh, but you can turn it off if you like. Um, okay, so 
That's the stride pivot and the hip adjustment done. That is just about it for the settings here. We just need to look at this, the actual settings folder and we have allow extension percent. Now the general rule of thumb with stride warping is that you can compress the leg, but you can never extend it beyond what this source animation is. So if I pause the animation here, in this particular pose, I can push this uh, leg out, but then I have to push it back towards the hips so that it maintains the same shape. However, if the leg is compressed, that's okay. Extending the legs breaks the animation a lot more than compressing it. Uh, you can compress the legs a fair bit before it becomes a problem. However, there are cases where sometimes you might want to allow a little bit of extension. And this is the option that lets you do that. By default, this is set to zero for no leg extension. If we set it to one, it's going to allow maximum leg extension, which is not going to look great. One is a bit too much and you'll see what I mean uh, in this case. Let me change the hip adjustment here quickly so we can get a better view. I'll set that to 0.2. You can see now that the legs are being allowed to extend uh, fully. They're not allowed to hyperextend, um, but just to get to a, towards a straight leg. And that's not too great. If we set this to 0.5, uh, it's gonna, not going to be quite as bad. And this can be really good uh, when going up and down slopes where our legs do extend a little bit more. Again, this is a setting that's up to you how you want to play it, whether you want no leg extension or allow a little bit. Basically, this is a percentage of the remaining allowable extension that a leg could have before it is straight. Um, so there is that setting. So that's it for the stride warp node. I hope this tutorial has helped you understand how it works. The stride warp node is the flagship node of the plugin. So it's obviously the biggest one to note. Uh, again, just before I go, the debug can be accessed from the console at runtime and in the animation graph by typing a animnode.warp and then it's dot stride. And we can either enable it and disable it. Zero is disabled, one is enabled or we can change the debug settings. I'm gonna turn the debug off now to zero, and there we have it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.